my name is Serena Cashmere. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about AMDA, American Musical and Dramatic Academy. So I graduated with my BFA last week and I know a lot of people out there are wondering is the school legit? How great is it? Is it worth the $200,000 investment in my education? So I'm going to be answering all of your questions in this video. Stay tuned. Subscribe, like, comment below, and let's get started. So I chose the Performing Arts BFA uh, with a specialty in acting. So what that means is that I have more flexibility in my schedule so I can take dance classes and acting, of course, because that's my specialty, uh, dance, music, uh, instruments, writing, directing. It's more of a well-rounded approach and I get to pick and choose my classes more so than someone who's just on an acting track, just on a dance track, or just on a musical theater track. I also did the LA campus, uh, except for my third semester, I transferred to the New York campus and I was able to do a semester there, so I do have experience on both campuses. It took me about two and a half years to get my degree through AMDA, and that's because I already had my general ed credits done with a community college. So why did I pick AMDA? So when I decided that I was going to go to college, which took me a while, it was kind of a journey to get there, <laughs> uh, I was thinking either NYU, Juilliard if I could get in, uh, USC, or AMDA. And it took me a while to even discover AMDA because it's not as well known as those other schools I just mentioned. But I was really frustrated that I could not find a school that was BFA instead of a BA that allowed me to do more than acting because they would only allow acting and then it would be like just theater. But I wanted camera and theater and music and dance and writing and directing and stage combat. And I could not find that anywhere and so I just could not you know, pull the trigger. And then I'm from California, so it was easy to go to USC and check it out. And I was just so underwhelmed and offended by the tour that I got. They put us in this little office and gave us like these packets that just said how expensive it was gonna be. And the class list didn't look interesting at all. I mean, they didn't talk about what they could offer us, what kind of teachers were there. They showed us the theater, but they were like, well, you can't really use this most of the time. I mean, everything was so negative and I thought, why would I spend so much money if I don't even get what I want? So, plus USC, not the safest area. And the LA is also not in the safest area. It's better than USC, but it's in the middle of Hollywood. It's like a block from um, Sunset and Vine, Hollywood and Vine. So there's homeless people everywhere, there's crime, someone like shot someone while I was there on the street. Uh, we had like, not burglaries, but we had someone break in and like steal money from students. Like, someone got kidnapped. Like there was actual crimes going on at the school while I was there. They do have security guards and they do offer to like walk you places, but I've never seen anyone take advantage of that. Um, New York actually felt really safe but I feel like AMDA could be in a better location. They just want it to be in Hollywood so that it looks glamorous to the people that don't live here and don't know that that area isn't the best. All right, so question number one is dress code. So AMDA is known for having a really strict dress code. Uh, you might've heard of AMDA blacks. So especially in your earlier semesters, we have to wear all black in all of our classes. Uh, no jeans are allowed, no skirts, no shorts, especially if you're in VPS class. VPS is voice production and speech. Um, so they're very strict on that, no open toe shoes, um, you know, nothing distracting. So like I couldn't wear this to class because it has colors on it, but then as you go up through the semesters, then it's a little more lax. For all of your scenes, you are expected to dress in costume for those scenes. So it's not like the school provides you costumes, instead you have to provide the costumes. And so usually, well, I would say usually you can pick something from your closet, but that's not entirely true because a lot of the period piece scenes, you have to buy your own stuff. But luckily, AMDA kind of has it streamlined because they love their blacks. So everyone's expected to eventually have a black corset, a black, um, I think 
it's called a circle skirt that goes to your knees and then a long black skirt that goes to your ankles and then you need to have black heels and a black leotard. So if you have those staples, which eventually are required, then you don't have to buy all of these elaborate costumes because if you're doing, you know, an Elizabethan era style play, then you have the correct length skirt and, you know, all of those things kind of play together and it works out. And then more of the modern stuff, you can go to your own closet for that. But you have to bring your costume and your props to every single class, which can be kind of obnoxious, especially when you're hauling it from your dorm, which in LA is up a mountain if you're in Franklin. And if you're in New York, it's a long ways away. It's a 30 minute walk if you're in the Strat. And I mean, otherwise, if you're not on the Strat, you take the subway anyway. So it's a lot to haul around, especially when you have different props and costumes for each class. Okay, so what is the AMDA audition like? So for me, I auditioned at the LA campus uh, in person. And you know, you just show up, you check in, you wait in the waiting room. They had some other students there who were trying to like keep our spirits up and they're like, are you excited? And we're like, yeah. Um, I've already been auditioning like in life, so I wasn't that, I don't know, ruffled by the experience, but of course I wanted to do a good job and I was still nervous. Um, there were some people in the room, there was like five brothers who the teachers at the school already knew because they were in a show in Vegas. So that was a little intimidating. But then there was this other girl I made friends with who asked me to help her with her monologue, just to make sure she had it. So I was like, great. So I held up her script and I was, you know, waiting for her to say the lines and she didn't have any of it memorized, not one word. And it was so bad. I was like feeling bad for her. So I said, you know what? Why don't you just tell me the story and that's what you'll do in your audition. Since you don't have it memorized, you can just tell the story. She didn't even know what the story was. So um, don't be unprepared like her. All you need is two contrasting monologues. I think it's like one period, one classical, and it's one dramatic, one comedy. Um, you go into a room, there was one person there. I did my monologue, you slate, so you say your name. And uh, then afterwards, he actually gave me some critiques that I thought were helpful, I appreciated that. And then I was on my way. And then I was sent to another room to do the interview portion. And it was a room with a bunch of desks and a bunch of people being interviewed all at the same time. So it was not nerve wracking at all. And she just asked me what schools I was interested in and what I liked about AMDA and when I would be ready to start. I think she asked what I liked about acting. But yeah, I got the feeling that she didn't really care what my answers were. It was more of a formality. Um, and then when I found out that I got into AMDA, I was actually asleep. And my mom came in with the phone. She's like, someone wants to talk to you. It was like, I'm asleep. But she just kept insisting. So I was like, hello. And the guy's like, were you asleep? I was like, yeah, who is this? And he's like, you just got into AMDA. <laughs> At that point, I was kind of wondering if it was super easy to get into AMDA, <laughs> which when I looked it up, I think it's like 23% acceptance rate or something. So it's not easy because most people don't get in, but also like it has better percentages than other schools. So there's that. Um, and I also got a great scholarship. I think it was like 6,000 a year. So I was like, woohoo, you know, they loved me. And then when I got to school, everyone I knew got the same scholarship. Okay, orientation. So I had the great pleasure of doing orientation in LA and New York. Super annoying. All of us LA transfers were really, really pissed. So the LA orientation was fun. Um, they like split you up into groups and you make up skits and you perform it for each other. Um, my group skit was uh, Dora the Explorer and uh, I was backpack. So I was on <laughs> my friend uh, Robert's back. Robert was playing Dora the Explorer. So I was like holding on to him like piggyback style as backpack, but I was a depressed backpack. And so we had this whole like comedy skit and that was really fun. Um, but it's like, I think three days or a week long or something. It's like the week before school starts and there's like game nights and movie nights and you just get to know the other people, which is both fun and awkward. Now, you go through really long seminars and I took notes, most people didn't. It's a good way to get a lot of information at once because there is a lot to know about AMDA before you start, but it's just really long hours. So if you can make friends or 
find a way to make it interesting for yourself. Which is why when us LA transfers went to New York for our third semester, we were super annoyed that they put us through orientation again because we had just flown there. We were super tired. We just wanted to get some sleep, spend some time with our family that flew with us before they go back. And instead they told us we had to sit through orientation again, even though we already know the rules of AMDA. And it was pretty much the same orientation in New York as LA. LA versus New York. So I would say that LA is more relaxed and you would think it would be more film focused, but I wouldn't necessarily say that. I actually thought that my film classes in New York were better because in New York they actually have a sound stage. I mean, it's small, but they have a sound stage with lights and a cinematographer and they have their own props for you. And I mean, you have to, if you're not in the scene, you work on continuity, um, you know, like line read, script supervisor. Like, so it's much more like an actual set in New York. Um, LA, like I said, is more relaxed. The campus is much closer together. Like the dorms are within walking distance within a few blocks of the school. Um, but there's nowhere to sit. That was always a problem. Like you always have to sit in the hallways. Um, the food is better in LA. They have two cafes. One's really large. It has a balcony and there's nice seating areas. The food's really good, especially those breakfast burritos that always give me a stomach ache, but they're delicious. Um, and then the food in New York, do not buy cooking with Corey. Do not buy it. It's disgusting and it's really expensive. So you're gonna wanna like pack some PB&Js every day because you do not wanna be left with cooking with Corey. In New York, the teachers were really hard on me and really strict and I personally love that. I thrived in that environment. I was also constantly stressed out and on the edge of a panic attack all the time, but it did make me a better actor and it forced me to work under pressure. So I really appreciated that. Whereas in LA, you get some corrections and you sit down and you don't feel like there's an emotional stake. You know, there's not so much highs and lows in your emotional life in LA. You just go to class and do your thing every day. But in New York, it was really like, well, if you're not good today, then you're not gonna be able to make it in the real world. And who do you think you are? And you're nothing. It's just, it's a lot tougher in New York. <laughs> okay, so I just want to address Scamda. Anyway, the rumor is that one of the celebrities that attended AMDA like hated his experience and coined the term scamda and that has just stuck with the school and I guess there was some lawsuit way back when that also brought that name up again. So whenever kids at school are complaining about how expensive the school is or they feel like, you know, a teacher's mistreating them usually, they'll be like, oh, it's scamda, I don't need this and okay. Let me just walk you through my experience and my perspective. So I was already in SAG. I was already born and raised in Los Angeles. So I came in thinking I'm hot shit. <laughs> like, obviously I need to be here. That's why I signed up. But also like I can feel good about those things that I have that solid foundation. I came in and I thought that most of the actors were terrible. And I thought that the teachers were not pushing me. I thought that the schedule was super rigorous and I just felt like I could be doing other things. I was in a relationship at the time. I didn't really like connect to the other classmates. Like I had some friends, but I wasn't like clinging to those friends, you know? It took a while to really develop those. Um, but the whole first semester, I really hated it. It was like your first class is at 9 a.m. You're not done until 5 or 6 p.m. And then after your classes, that's when you have workshops and rehearsals. And that's when I was auditioning outside of school, which you're not supposed to do. But yeah, so I was super tired. And also let me say a lot of people dropped out after first semester because everyone fought with each other. There was so much drama and everyone was like, this is scamda, this is too much. Second semester, I took the semester off because my sibling was performing at the Sydney Opera House, so we had to go to Australia. Um, but I heard that like we lost so many more people that semester because second semester, I guess there was even more drama, so a bunch of people left then. Second semester, it got a little bit better. I was pushed a little more. I was starting to connect to the people in my class, 
third semester I went to New York and that's where I was like, okay, like I need this training. This is intense. This is real. I have so much to learn. I suck as an actor. And that's when I was like in it. That's when I was no longer doubting. Do I want to stay in AMDA? Is it scamda? Is it worth it? Fourth and fifth were just a blur. Like I learned a lot, but they were just there. I was just watching the time pass. And then seventh semester, I started to get classes I really liked. Um, I had skipped a semester, so I was with another new group of people. And um, I was in my first AMDA show. And then eighth semester, I did my own thing because performing arts degree, I changed my schedule and I didn't do a lot of the normal eight semester classes. But I will say AMDA brought in some amazing alumni and the best agents, managers, and casting directors to talk to us every single week. So I got so much better at talking to people that I respect and to figure out who I connect to and why and to feel good about those reasons, not just try to please everybody, um, to figure out what questions to ask, what they're looking for from me. Um, and then also I was in Spotlight, which means you create a reel and then all of the industry professionals watch it. Um, so I had 70 of the highest agents, managers, and casting directors in LA watch that video, that spotlight video. So it's worth it to me. $200,000 is a lot of money, but to get a BFA is amazing. To get it from a prestigious school, uh, AMDA is number one in the most represented performers on Broadway. And also just to have such a wide variety of coursework from writing, directing, acting, you know, musical instruments, singing, dancing, um, stage combats, dialects and accents. I would not be able to get all of those things in such a short amount of time if I hadn't gone to AMDA. If I had to give advice to someone just going to AMDA, I would say when it comes to the gossip, mind your own business. I would say think big picture. I would say limit your partying activity. I would say make as many friends as possible and know that not all of them are going to stick around. I would say take advantage of the rehearsal rooms. So you can book rehearsal rooms uh, any time of the day, but really after your classes is best. And the people that I really admired, they all had this in common where they would book a rehearsal room, not just to practice on something in class, but to do something that interested them. So it'd be like, oh, I want to work on this monologue that wasn't assigned to me. I just want to work on it. Or I want to sing a song. Or every classroom has a piano in it. So a lot of actors would teach themselves to play piano. Like Taking those times to find your artistry again. They expect you to be on time every single day. If you are even a minute late to class, the door closes and you are not allowed in class. You also cannot miss one more class than there are number of classes in that week or you get flunked out of the class. So for example, if I have a class that's three times a week, if I miss that class four times in a semester, I'm flunked out of the class. And because it's a performing arts school, attendance marks really high in your percentage in your grade. So if you just attend every single class, you'll probably get at least a B, even if you flunk everything else. Always be memorized. If you have time now before you get into AMDA, spend some time memorizing, especially in New York. Uh, if you're in the acting program, I think even musical theater, you will be tested out of the gate on your memorization skills. And it's extremely stressful. You will survive. Um, in New York, we took this test and it was third semester. Everyone failed in the class except for one person. So you wouldn't be the only one. However, at the LA campus, pretty much everyone is able to keep up um, with memorizing right away, but a lot of people wait till the last minute. And the few instances I've seen where people weren't memorized, it's just really painful to watch, really unprofessional, and it makes the other people not want to be your scene partners in the future. Some other advice, get sleep, um, avoid relationships if you can, especially with other people at AMDA. Um, the people that dated other people at AMDA, they suffered so, so, so much. I won't go into details. Um, I'll just say that there's two mental health counselors and that's not enough and they're not specialized 
enough to help the students at AMDA. A lot of people are really suffering. Um, a lot of people aren't eating, aren't sleeping. I mean, there's some really bad things going on. So take care of yourself. Um, make good relationships with your teachers. You know, don't be a kiss up, but do ask questions. Um, small chat is always appreciated, find commonalities, all that good stuff. And just know that, you know, in a few years, you're either going to be auditioning for them or with them. So make a good impression, stay classy, stay humble, stay hungry, and uh, stay unattached to the drama. We had to finish the last two semesters online. Um, I did high school online, so it wasn't too difficult for me to adapt, but for most of my classmates, it was extremely difficult, and a lot of people um, dropped out or skipped a semester, and uh, everyone has their own way of dealing with it. The graduation situation was actually really pleasant. I was so sad not to graduate in person, but they did a lovely job. They made this uh, video collage of a lot of our work. They had our teachers give us advice through another video collage. Each one of us had our own slides with our headshots and with our personal thank you note. And we had like a 50, 15 second video. So I made mine like a photo collage of all of the memories from the last two and a half years of AMDA. Um, it was just very sweet. The president of AMDA, he gave a speech and he was just so charming and delightful. Uh, when I met him in New York, he thought my name was Kashmir and I never corrected him because I just thought that was great. I was like, yeah, I'm Kashmir at school. In your eighth semester, there's showcase and there's spotlight. Now, because I did the last semester online, um, we were basically told, like on the down low, that Showcase wasn't worth it because he was like, no industry professionals are gonna see it really. You know, it's gonna be like you pitching scenes for weeks and weeks. It's after class hours, and it's just gonna be made into a video that you can send to your family. So I was thinking, I would rather have some peace of mind this last semester instead of stressing myself out. And my family has already seen the act, so I skipped Showcase, um, which I would not have done if I was still in person. And then Spotlight is what I was saying before, where you create your own reel, and then that gets sent to agents and managers. Um, that was really difficult for a lot of people, because usually when we're on campus, the AMDA, uh, films are reels for us, so it's professional, it looks clean, it looks legit, but this semester everyone had to film their own. Um, I already had a reel since I'm in SAG, but I did add a monologue to it that I worked on with my professor, and then I had some friends of mine who have a production company film it for me so that it looked legit. And I'll actually link that below in case you're interested to kind of see the quality of work I'll put out there. My personal struggles were letting someone else dictate my schedule. Most people didn't have trouble with this, it was more of a me thing. But I just didn't like, well, I was at community college before and I could choose my own schedule. But being at AMDA, especially in the beginning semesters, they just give you your schedule and you don't get to choose. And I didn't like being told what teacher I was going to have and where I was going to be and what my breaks were going to be like. And I just felt like I was in prison so much, especially in those first couple semesters. I also didn't like teachers that didn't push me, and I didn't like teachers that were condescending. If you go to the New York campus, there are some teachers that can get under your skin. Um, in this one way, I didn't struggle as much as other people because some of the difficult personalities at AMDA New York. I had had similar experiences with those personalities in the past. So I would go in with the attitude of, well, this person's annoying. So whatever they say, it's gonna annoy me and I'll just let it go because they're just annoying. But I didn't take it personally. But there was some teachers at AMDA LA where I felt like they should be better and they could be better and I just couldn't let it go. <laughs> So there's that. Um, there's a lot of drama between people. I didn't really have drama per se between people, but there's definitely a lot of like awkward situations. 
And I learned that the best way to deal with it is just to communicate. So, you know, if you just don't like someone, like probably just leave them alone instead of confronting them. But if there's something unsaid between you and a friend, might as well just pull them aside and be like, hey, let's talk about this and let it go. Because you're going to be with that person for years working on scenes together. So just let it go. So there's a lot to talk about with AMDA. There's so many questions out there, and especially now that it's becoming more and more popular and more well known. I just wanted to address some of the basics in case you're interested in going to the school. But if you have any other questions, go ahead and comment and I have no problem answering those. It's been a wild, wild journey. I can't even believe it's done. I'm so happy. But I am so thankful that I went to AMDA. It was definitely a great decision, especially in the beginning when I thought it was a waste of time and I was going to quit. I'm so glad that I didn't. And I still believe that I picked the best school for me and what I was looking for. Thanks for watching. Bye.